Wednesday on the glass ceiling every day. We, every Wednesday, not every day, every Wednesday at four, we have conversations about the different barriers that hold women back. And for the past few weeks, we've been having a great conversation about the pressure that married people face to have children and the pressure that single people face to get married and then have children, especially women. Because everything that happens to everybody, women always get the shorter end of that stick. Now, I want to remind you about why we started this conversation. Last month, we had a very powerful conversation about baby factories. You remember, at the start of October, the Lagos State Police Command raided a chain of baby factories. And so we had conversations here about why baby factories are thriving. And I talked to you, and I also talked to a reverend sister and an NGO executive. They're experts on the subject. The reverend sister was also a lecturer, and she'd published scholarly articles on the subject, uh, 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 on the subject matter. And in all those conversations, one reason kept getting mentioned over and over and over women are under pressure to have children and if they cannot have biological children it is seen as a failure so for the last few weeks we've been looking into the pressure where is it coming from we've tried to trace all the sources of the pressure we've tried to analyze them and we've presented it before you you and i actually have been doing the tracing and, and, and the analysis because I haven't had guests. You have been my guests. And we did that so that you can decide whether they are healthy or not, whether they should be continued or whether this pressure should be removed from the shoulders of women. And today, I want us to talk some more about the pressure. Specifically, I want us to talk about the effects that this pressure has on couples, especially the women. In any situation at all, pressure often leads to tension. It leads to stress. This is, of course, uh, you know, common knowledge. And that has physiological effects. So it has physical effects like high blood pressure, like hormonal changes. And here's the funny thing about stress and pregnancy. Many, many uh, medical experts will tell you that stress makes it even harder for a woman to get pregnant because it changes her hormone levels. So let's follow this, this uh, vicious cycle for a moment, shall we? Let's follow it. So a couple is trying to get pregnant, but it's not happening yet. People around them start putting pressure on them. The pressure is a source of anxiety and stress for the woman. The stress makes it even harder for her to get pregnant. But they keep trying and it isn't happening. And the pressure from the people around them increases. And so the stress increases. You see the cycle? And that's just one of the many effects of the pressure to have children. There's also the toll that it takes on marriages. Because that pressure often comes with conflict. A fight between a person and her in-laws. And if the spouse doesn't handle that conflict well, they inherit the conflict and the hostility. Suddenly, husband and wife, who were just fine and facing their problems together, now they're at each other's throats. Then there are the actions that are taken out of desperation. So you find husbands being pressured into taking second wives or doing it themselves because they feel they must procreate. Or you have wives going to baby factories, which was where our conversation started all those weeks ago. Or you have wives getting somebody to impregnate them when they realize that it's their husbands who cannot conceive a child, which is what I told you last week my, my uh, friend's uh, in-laws wanted her to do when they found out about her husband being unable to get her pregnant. And there are so many other things that people do just because they feel like if they do not have children, they failed their family, they failed their ancestors, they failed their God, they failed their spouse, they failed themselves. It's as old as the Bible where Sarah told Abraham, the, uh, her husband, to have a child with her maid, Hagar. It's, it, it, this thing, nobody today starts. But these are all cases where husband and wife could not have a child together. 
What about those who finally succeed after all the pressure? Are they out of the woods? Not always. There are so many cases where people have children under pressure and it leads them to more problems than they had before. <laughs> you have couples who have children before they are financially ready for parenthood, for instance. They don't have the resources to feed or clothe or care for, educate the children they have brought into the world, but they brought them because it was expected of them. Now, what are you supposed to do? Now, what are you time don't reach to do? Once you reach a certain age, you marry, you born picking. Ah, what are you wait for? I never marry. Ah, what are you wait for? I never born. Nobody, they ask whether you get money to marry or whether you get money to born. Because diaper, they cost money. Baby food, they cost money. Baby tissue, they cost money. Baby powder, they cost money. They can't reach school fees side. Ew. So what you have happening is that couple becomes a burden to their family and their friends. Or they end up giving the child or the children a poor standard of living. Some may have been financially prepared, but for some people, the process of having the children impoverish them. So they're going from church to church. They'll pay these amounts to open card here. Or pay that amount to buy special anointing oil there. Or pay that amount for special family deliverance. Or pay this one or pay that one. All your money gone. So eventually when the baby comes, no money to raise the baby. You now start depending on family and friends. Then you have those who don't go to the religious places. You have those who try to do IVF. Have you seen how much IVF costs these days? And we hear of young couples doing two or three rounds of IVF because they must have children. And of course, there are those who are not psychologically ready to be, pre to be parents. I'm not talking about financially now. I'm talking psychologically. Because it's a big responsibility you're about, you, 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 you are about to uh, 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 undertake. Being a parent, it's a huge responsibility. In my opinion, there are a lot of Nigerian parents who have no business being parents. And a lot of those people probably started out because there was a lot of pressure on them to become parents and they were not psychologically ready to be parents. And so they ended up being incompetent and neglectful or even abusive. Because last class, they didn't want the job. They were pressured into the job. And now both they and their children are suffering for it. Now, these are not my thoughts. These are not my opinions. These are the things that you have said to me in the course of the conversations that we have had. And that's what I want us to discuss today. So let me hand it over to you. Which of these effects of pressure to have children have you witnessed? Which of these ones have you witnessed? Why do you think people yield to the pressure to have children? even when it doesn't favor them. Do you think as a society, we are fully aware of the dangers of pressuring each other into having children? That's the most important question. Do you think as a society, we are fully aware of the dangers of pressuring each other into having children? What do we need to do to get more people to understand? Say, no, be your business. 01277-0993. That's the line for our female callers. 01277-0993. If you're not female, don't call that line. 01277-0993. But if you are female or male, you can call us on 01277-1993. 2993-3993. Leave me comments on Facebook as well. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. YouTube is Nigeria Info FM. Tweet at me as well at Nigeria Info FM. Or you can tweet at my personal handle, S. Ezekwesame. Either ways, we'll see it. Again, 01277 1993 2993 3993. Austin is in Lekki. Hello, Austin. Oh, Sandra. Yes. Nice connecting with you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How is your day going? Uh, slowly. How's yours going? Don't worry, sooner. Uh, oh, Mr. Hall is going to join you. Mm. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, uh, childbearing has become 
uh, has separated so many families today. And in a nutshell, uh, our men, African men, Nigerian men, when you do not have a male child, it becomes a, maybe, maybe it seems like as if you have been forgotten by even your, your so called your God and your ancestors. So I think the humble thing to do is, if you can, if you don't have money for IVF, you can go for an uh, to, uh, to uh, adopt a child. And in a, in a situation whereby some uh, towns or villages do not accept uh, an adopted child. I don't think uh, that that man will, 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 will have to, they will allow him to rest, even though to rest even when, when he's, no, he's, no, he's no longer living. So my humble suggestion is when the pressure is on, the husband and the wife need to come together and they look up to God. It's only when, 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 when you look up to God that you can be able to at least to maintain that particular pressure. When they say, oh, go do this, he said, you are, you are doing your best. A lot of men out there, when the when the pressure comes, they don't know what to do. They will be doing it secretly. Why not carry your wife along so that you get it right? So that uh, tomorrow you the, your, your family you, you have a divided family. That is what is causing a lot of uh, uh, divorce marriages today in Nigeria. All right, Austin. Thanks for calling, Jeremiah. And Amor Duffy wants to share a personal experience. Jeremiah, go ahead. That's right. Uh, I tell you, I had a when I was going to get married. Let me just go straight to the point. Mm. When I was going to marry, my wife was very lepacious. Okay. <laughs> and my friend, really, she said, Ah, this girl will carry Beleso. We'll make you put on Beleses now. And I said, I looked at them and laughed. Mm -hmm. I loved my wife so much that I, I, I could not give her any permit for such acts. And I dated her for four years before I married her. But I tell you what, the pressure was so much that, are you sure she was pregnant? Look at how she looks. She's very uh, 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 slim. She's very like that. Uh, I, I think that pressure is is is, is very common, especially uh, uh, back home. And do, 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 do you think do home. you think we're fully aware of the dangers of that kind of pressure? Well, I don't. Want, I think uh, illiteracy is part of it. Lack of exposure is part of it. And uh, sometimes I, I I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, it's illiteracy. All right, Jeremiah, thank you for calling me. Uh, we've got Tuanqua Godwin calling us as well. And he says, uh, well, I don't know what he says yet, but uh, Wankwa, what what is it that you were going to say? Yes, I said, uh, uh, one, I want to thank you for your program is very educative. Thank I you. think most of the program I've been listening over today mm. is very educative. So, but uh, I said, earlier, mm. that both couples mm. need to understand themselves and believe in God. And, uh, you know, even if you go for this genotype, people are saying mm. you must do genotype, this, this, this. it's only God who can give both couples succor when that situation comes in. But if you allow your family members to start uh, coming and mingling into your affair, mm. it will bring up for both couples to break up. So, so, but it's so, not so easy in African context. It's the couple that needs to um, um, hold themselves together, is what you're saying. Yes, yes. Hmm. Hmm. And they should not allow anybody to interfere because in African context, especially the uh, side we came from, the Igbo side, hmm. the moment uh, you, are, you are married, one year, second year, third year, fourth year, oh God, everywhere will be marang. <laughs> Either your wife is from the sea in Mami Water or the man is a, is a ritualist. Mm. Different uh, talks from different quotas. But how do we you change that mindset? How do we do that? How do we get more people to understand that? Sometimes the couple said they don't even want children. They just want to be married and be married in Alabanco. You know? <laughs> you know? How do we get people to understand that? Sometimes <laughs> the couple are not ready. Mentally, they are not ready to be parents yet. How do we get people no, no. to understand it? Yes, it's left for the couple, like I said. There are some couples that will get married and uh, they are not ready to have issues yet mm -hmm. because of their predicament. But uh, people cannot understand. People want to dump into their fellow How do we, how, how do we get people to understand that it's not their business? That's my point, Wangkwa. Kemi says that this is very problematic. Kemi, you're a first time caller, eh? Yes, I am. Yes, woo! Welcome. Good to have you Good on the afternoon. show. Good afternoon. Yes, I'm in traffic and listening to you. 
listening to your um, program. Okay. Very interesting topic. Thank you. And I've been having this issue, actually. I have a daughter, actually. Okay. And I've been married for about five years. And, you know, I have a child already, for goodness sake. Stop telling me, uh-uh, once you have another child, another child, you're getting old, another child, you're not in my pocket. I see every other person that has, like, four children, five children, three children, how they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that for myself. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. In fact, when this, when this program started, I had to call my husband. I said, you know what? Listen to nothing, but you're now. They are saying something very interesting that we usually talk about. I don't know. My neighbors, everybody, although my family members, I think they understand to an extent mm. and because they're educated. So I also think education is also part of it. Mm. We're not well informed. We mm. don't have a good education. And we don't know that population is actually the number one problem of this country. Mm. Mm. Po population is... If we can because eventually what, we're not going to have food to eat, though. Because there'll exactly. be too many people. Exactly. <laughs> so we should actually be that praying that couples should not have children. We'll be begging couples don't have children or have only no, one. Not, not even that they won't have children, but one or two is fine. Hmm. One or two is fine. When they are ready, they can have more. But one or two is fine. Then you can provide, you can have the basic standard. Because this thing has a lot of disadvantages, even when you start having so many children. Hmm. Because you will not be able to give standard mm -hmm. you will not be looking at other people's families that don't have as much children and mm. then bullying will come in jealousy will come in mm -hmm. all those things i actually experienced mm. to be honest mm. I'm so because sorry, i have Kimmy. one child and i've got my husband work so we can provide we can give enough mm -hmm. for our one daughter and we are fine by it ha. she has cousins that she can play with if she needs if she feels like she's lonely Kemi on is good though school, school fees will not be your problem Amen, amen. <laughs> even, so even if money is your problem or not, mm. I don't think, even if you have money, mm. I don't think you should have so many children and then pressure the other people to actually follow suit, follow what you're doing. It's mm -hmm. not advice. Mind your business. People mm. should learn to mind their business. Mm. People should learn to keep quiet when they see things. It's not everything that should come out of your mouth. Mm. I just hope everybody can have this kind of orientation that I do and then a lot of problems will be out. Well, I've been hammering it in their heads for the past few weeks, so let's hope uh, we're I, changing I pray, something. <laughs> Kemi, thanks for calling me. Let me yeah, talk to Linus. Welcome. Linus is in Badagri. Hello, Linus. Hello, Sandra. Hi, how are you, Sandra? I'm fine. Mm, go ahead. Oh, thank God for connecting you today. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have been listening to this program. Mm-hmm. My, then my contribution is this. Okay. Uh, there is no way we can educate people to know, to understand the pressure that these people are going through. I am also one of those. I got married so for 19 years ago. Okay. And my wife is yet uh, to give birth to the child. But I'm believing God. There is nothing God cannot do. And so I, I did not allow the family, my own family, or anybody to pressurize me, to bring that pressure on me, mm. because this is what God only can do. Mm. If I have tried my, my own possible best, mm. then I cannot get it right. So I have to relax. I wouldn't want anybody to pressurize me. Mm. And I also want to advise our listener that in this case, it is nothing... It is not something that one can do it. It is only God. When we try our best, medically, spiritually, or otherwise, we should not allow pressure to scatter our relationship. Mm. So that is my own contribution. Thank you, Linus. Then what can we do? What can we do? Like what you asked. Mm. What I suggest we should do is, we should believe that nobody created a child. Even if you want to adopt, even though you want to, I, I don't know, do ID, IDF, as you said. Mm. If God will not approve it, this thing will not come to pass. So we should allow our mind, we should allow God to take full course. So uh, in African culture, I know we bend much on having children. To have children is good, but let it come the right way. That is my take. All right, Linus. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And all the best, Linus. Yeah, thank you. All right. My final call is Ronke, who says uh, that she doesn't understand the purpose of the pressure. She's in transit. Ronke, hi. 
Hello, Sandra. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I don't understand why people say they are pressured into doing things. Even sometimes, I feel some people actually put the pressure on themselves. Mm. Like I have, a, I have like two friends. Okay. One hasn't had a baby. She's like putting so much pressure on herself. The other one has a child, but you know, wants to have another one. I look at these two people that okay. Maybe I'm just assuming. I don't think you guys are ready. But I can't say it to them. Hmm. Because they'll be like, yeah, you have your own children now. What are you telling me that I don't, uh, I want to have another one and everything. Hmm. And I, what I hear from them is, ah, what will people say? Ah, people are saying that ah, this one is already needing a younger one and everything. I'm not hearing. Like, I would want to hear people say, oh, I actually really want to have a child because I just want to have you know, my own yeah. on, so, and, so the know, conversation is for myself. Yeah, so the conversation is never about, oh, I want the child. It's always about let people not say that something. And, and I notice that, you know, people that talk like that, if you notice, some people just have, most people just have children for status sake. Mm. Not that, oh, I have these children and I'm responsible for them and I want to take care of them. Like you said, mm. that's where, you know, abuse comes in. Mm-hmm. You just have these children for, mm, you just have this thing for, you don't know the purpose of why you even want to have this thing. That's right. And it's wrong. And, and I feel that, you know, I don't know where it is going to stop. Like you said, it has been happening for time immemorial. Mm-hmm. But when are we going to now finally put a stop to it? I don't know. I don't like know. even spacing of children, sometimes some people tell you that I ah, don't face your children and me I face my children and I'm so happy. When I look at people in my PC, my children's PTA meeting and they're like telling me they have three or four children in secondary school, I'm just wondering how you guys doing this? How are you paying school wow. fees? Wow. Hey. Uh, I don't know, sure. <laughs> Everybody will be fine, we'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks for calling me, Rocket. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. Okay, I'll take more calls uh, on the show. If you just joined us, welcome. We've gone halfway. We have uh, a few more minutes to go. Actually, we've got a lot of minutes to go. We've got 23 minutes on the show left. So we're going to have more conversations about this pressure. And I'm asking you if you think as a society, we're fully aware of the dangers of pressuring each other into having children. I'm Sandra Ezekwesele. This is the glass ceiling ceiling. on hard facts.
is the glass ceiling, the glass ceiling. on hard facts. hard facts. On the glass ceiling today, we've continued conversations we started a few weeks ago where we're talking about the pressure on couples to have children. This week, we're talking about the effects and consequences of that pressure. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and we often see couples have children very early in their marriage, right? We also see people, especially young women, getting married very early before they have really advanced in, say, their careers. And now these young people who have not fully established themselves, now have a child or children. And a lot of sociologists and economists are saying that having children early often has a negative effect on a woman's economic prospects. Look at it this way. The young woman who hasn't gone far in her career is now married and has now had a child. Perhaps her salary and her husband's salary combined are not enough to pay for proper daycare and babysitting. That woman's work will suffer. If she's lucky, her office will permit her to take enough time off week after week to care for her child. But her career will still suffer. She's doing less work than her colleagues, so they will get promoted faster than her. That means that her salary will not be increasing. And that means she will still not be able to afford to pay for childcare. And that's if she's lucky. If she's not lucky, her office will not accommodate her. That means that she'll have to choose between taking care of her child and husband and keeping her job. Will her husband step in to do more childcare so that she can keep her job? In most cases, no. And so a large percentage of women in Nigeria who want to work have to leave the workforce in their children's early years. So suddenly, that family went from feeding two mouths with two salaries to feeding three mouths with one salary, only one. That family's ability to handle its expenses is now one third of what it used to be. That's what happens when a lower middle class couple have children too early. But you see this scenario I just painted, it's even worse for poorer couples. The added expense of feeding, clothing, caring for a child, it can turn a poor family into a begging family. We all know at least one person who relies on the generosity of family members to feed and train his or her children. And now if you look at that person's history, you'll find out that when they were getting married or having children, nobody around them was advising them to slow down because you can't afford it. In fact, you may even find that their closest relatives were pressuring them. Ah, when you go marry now? Ah, you no go born? This is an actual problem that exists. People are encouraged and pressured into bringing children into the world that they cannot properly take care of. But I also want us to talk about what the pressure does to the couple and the way it changes the way they live together. Have you heard of, of, of cases where a couple turns against each other because of childlessness? Have you heard of those cases? Have you seen those cases? Do you know people who are in that situation? Last week, oh no, no, no not, not last week. Um, this was, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember when this happened now. Um, this was sometime in, in September when we were discussing, uh, uh, baby factories. No, this was in October. Actually, when we were discussing baby factories, one of my callers told me how the pressure affected her and her husband. This was Rafiat. Yes. I remember she talked to us. She told all of us who were listening how the pressure affected her and her husband. She said her husband's relatives were attacking her because they, they had no child and her husband was not doing enough to protect her. She, she said it caused a lot of friction in her marriage. And she grew resentful. And she had to talk it over. What do you think about the dynamic we have in many Nigerian families 
where this is allowed, in-laws can put pressure on their relative's spouse. How do we get this to change? What do we need to do to get more people to understand? Because this part of the conversation, I want us to talk solutions. We've identified that the pressure is a bad thing. We've identified all the different ways and all the different sources of the pressure. We've talked about the effects of the pressure. I mean, I took the time to tell you that this thing is a vicious cycle. Because if a woman, for instance, is trying to have is to get pregnant and you know they're both medically okay and you know they can have children and she wants to have children and she's trying but she can't and the thing is stressing her, it's going to make it even harder for her to get pregnant because the medical experts will say to you that stress makes it even harder for a woman to get pregnant i painted the cycle for you a couple trying to get pregnant but it's not happening yet people around them start putting pressure on them the pressure is a source of anxiety and stress for the woman the stress makes it even harder for her to get pregnant but they keep trying and it's not happening and the pressure from the people around them increases and so the stress increases and so it's a cycle that never ends and that's just one of the many effects how do we get people to see that whether or not a couple has children or doesn't have children is not your business how do we get people to understand that asking them uh -uh, you never enter uh -uh, your belly still flat how do we get people to see that that is a dangerous thing we're doing to couples because perhaps they're not financially ready perhaps they're not psychologically ready they're not mentally ready. They're not physically ready. Perhaps they don't just want children, period. How do we get people who are not involved in the marriage? And by involved in marriage, I mean the husband and the wife. How do we get the sister of the bride or the groom, the brother of the bride or the groom, the mother of the bride or the groom, the father of the bride or the groom, the neighbor of the bride or the groom, the colleague in the office of the bride or the groom, to understand it is not your business you should not be asking these questions because you are putting pressure on them and that pressure can be dangerous how do we do that it's not just dangerous for the health of the couple it's dangerous for their marriage it's dangerous for the children that they may eventually have if they are not ready to have these children how do we get to that point because if you're not ready to have children and you have children it means you may not have the money with which to take care of them it means you're not psychologically ready to take care of them which means that you're probably bringing in children who may suffer abuse at the hands of their parents you're probably bringing in children that you are too incompetent to take care of. You may bring in children that you begin to neglect. So how do we get the people? Because we can say, oh, the couple needs to find a way to not allow the people to get in there. Omo, it's very, very hard to tune people out. It's very, very hard to uh, get to the point where you are mentally strong enough to not allow the things that people are saying to you and of you to affect you. That's because you are already saying those things to yourself. So when everybody else is saying it, it's like confirmation bias. So I think, and maybe I'm wrong, I think what needs to happen is we need to tell the people who will tell you, ah, ah your stomach is still flat. Ah, bros, no baby yet. Your mother, I'm never still carry. We need those people to stop saying those things, to stop bringing it up. How do we do that? What do we need to do? 01277 Hello. Thanks for calling. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Is this B.O.A.? Yes, it is. How are good. you? I'm good. Well, not really. I'm ill, but go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Feel better soon. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing is the husband needs to be on the wife's side. So if pressure is coming from his family, for instance, hmm. he needs to back her up. He can't abandon her or try, you know, become become her enemy because obviously nobody goes into a marriage. Maybe a few, but most people want children. It's not like you just decided, you know, that oh. They want it as well, so they need to understand that we also want this, and you're really not. They need to talk to these people, like mother-in-laws and siblings and everybody. Mm. We also want it, but you putting pressure on us is actually not helping. Mm. 
it's not this is not really where we want to be so don't add to the drama it's already you know we already don't like the situation mm. so you're really not helping and as somebody said some people are just illiterate mm. so they're not going to get it mm. but mm. we really need to talk and for those co-workers that's not your business what i'm doing in my family is not your problem mm. so we can express ourselves without being hostile or without turning into a fight but we need to be able to communicate with these people in our lives that you know what i also want a child so let god do is only god that can give me a child or give us a child mm. i'm not the one that makes the child mm. so right. after you've done everything you've done the medical checkups blah 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 hang in there and don't i mean i know it's it's, it's um it's easy to say hang in there but truly as i i believe as long as the couple are together on this thing mm. it will be easier than one person not you know being on their own. I see. All right, so Thanks for calling me. Baba G's in Badagri says, one, does, one doesn't <coughs> need to give in to these pressures. How? How does one avoid giving in? Yeah, uh, Sandra, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank you for the, se- uh, the first segment for apologizing on my behalf. Hmm. But honestly, you still misquoted me because uh, it would be so low on me to accuse a sitting governor. Uh, that is not what I said anyway. Okay. But let me continue. Yes. Yeah. How uh, quickly, if they are putting pressure on you, we don't live our life for others. The problem we have in this part of the world is a life of competition. What people will see. If I do this now, can I tell you, Sandra, mm. there are some people that marry early. You say, ah, you do marry early. You marry late. You say, ah, you marry late. You have a child. You say, which one even have? Is he baby boy or baby girl? Mm. And at the end of the day, by the time you put the pressure on you, they are not going to come at the end of the day. They are going to give you bills for school fee. Mm. One of my friends was telling me that the numbers of children you will have determine the kind of, you know, fee you will pay. If you have one, you will pay for one fee. If you have 10, they are going to tell you that, look, if you cannot pay that money, the children you will send them to different schools, and at the end of the day, they will be in mess to the society. So if the pressure is coming, especially from the members of the family, it happened to me early enough. A sister was telling me that, are you sure your body is working very well? Can you imagine? My sister, elder sister, telling me like that. And I told her, say, please, don't repeat that kind of a thing. After school, you have to get a job mm. before you marry. Why are you telling me this kind of a thing? You pressurized me. I wanted to follow her footsteps, but at the end of the day, I said, no, when I'm okay. But today, I think I have my own children. Mm. But at the end of the day, they are pressurizing you. I want to see it here, mm. the listeners. Mm. Please, don't listen to them. Mm. Don't live your life for others. Live your life for yourself. Don't live life of competition. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for calling me, Baba G. Jacob uh, says that that kind of pressure he blames on culture and tradition. I agree with you, Jacob. Yes, that's where the where, that's where it comes from. But how do we get people to understand that that pressure is dangerous? Yeah, the only way, like I made mention before, mm. is that we should be good. Uh, we uh, people who are wise enough should know that they should think. I mean, ahead of or beyond culture and tra- own progressive culture and tradition. It's not, that trend does not only happen in wo- women not giving birth at all. Mm. It happens when a uh, woman gives first issue uh, a female child, second issue a female child, third issue a female child, the whole family will rise up. Mm-hmm. I say, what is going on? Mm-hmm. You are giving us woman, woman, woman. Can't you give us a boy? Can't you give us a man mm-hmm. who will continue in the family? So such thing is, I mean, barbaric. It is barbaric. So men should be, uh, I mean, stand up and, I mean, try also to train your children very well. With that, we'll be getting it right. Hmm. With that, uh, yes, hmm. education also hmm. can try a, 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 go a long way. Okay. Education, because I see all these things I... Ignorance, mm. yes, mm. because it, it starts from village down to the city. Mm. Then, yeah, even people not marrying. Uh, they, they, if you want to, ma- a liberal man want to marry a woman, they say you want to die. This or that, or that. So 
all these are barbaric. Yeah. Hmm. That is what we should understand. All right, Jacob. Thanks for calling to share your thoughts. Emmanuel says that early marriage is not the problem. So what's the problem? Okay. Thank you so much. Um, like I was saying, early marriage is not really the problem here. There are lots of old or late marriage that are still having problems or issues. So I think it's all about individuals. We can't blame... Are you, hello, can you yes, me? I can hear you. Okay, we can't really blame the family, friends for pressurizing. Why? Why can't for me, we? Yes, I think some high are they want good for the couples. Like um, Econa stated earlier on, every person that goes into marriage must have a good expectation. Marriage is not just fun. It's not just about uh, a man and a woman. Why can't marriage be just fun? Why do we put all this pressure on okay, ourselves? But, but don't let me go to that now. Let me just be straight to your topic. Yes, but you, me Emmanuel, me. Emmanuel, you cannot say to me that uh, the family okay. and the friends who are putting pressure on the couple have their best intention at heart. All the time you're asking them, how far? You never enter. It's not okay. coming across uh, as me... care. It's coming across as pressure. And that pressure uh, isn't me... good. Let me come down here. Let me just come down. Mm. I want to ask you a question here. If someone is after your success, like, oh, my brother mm. put more effort in life, or my sister put more effort, mm. you need to work harder. Is that is that a taboo? No. It depends on the individual. How do you perceive? How do you handle information or the pressure of people on you? That reminds me of a certain time in my life when I was doing teaching job. What did I you say? You, you said if, it's the, if the person is a success. But if the person, yes, you said if the person is a success and you're saying, oh, do this, no, do that, right? No, I mean, if someone is after your soft, like pressurizing that, why are you not up to this level mm. for now that we need you to be this? Mm. We need this from you, auntie. We need this from you. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is a problem or is a curse. I don't think that is pressure. I think... All they want from you, they need something good in return. So it depends on the way you perceive it, the way you handle it, the way you take it as a person. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes, like a couple, let's go be straightforward. Mm -hmm. You pre a couple, we need a child, we need you, madam, please give us a child. It depends on the man, the woman involved. Ah, are they handling this matter? Wait, hold that on. Somebody so that is Hello? not, uh, Emmanuel, somebody that is okay. not the husband and the wife is saying, madam, we need a child, give us a child. That must be a family member. For me, I can say that. Uh, excuse me. Like, just tell me Child that you I will can, not I raise. I'm, I'm coming. I'm just hear me well. Hmm. If my friend is not doing well in business, I can say the same. That does not mean I'm... You understand? No, but I'm having a people. child is not a sign of not doing well. No, Why just, is having just, a child just, a sign of not doing well? No, having a child. Hmm. Not having a child. Hmm. Not having a child. Hmm? Uh -huh. it has, it has, for instance, like every family member... Uh -huh. Must have an expectation. The moment you go into marriage, they're expecting something from Why you. are those family members having expectations about a marriage that is not Generation their must own? Continue. Generation must continue. It is the will of God in the first instance. So, are you seeing how all of this is feeding the, the prevalence of baby factories? Because we have these kinds of Don't expectations. Uh, okay, are we, going to, are, we, are we accusing God? Are we saying God doesn't know what he meant by go and be fruitful? Does being fruitful only mean go and have children? It's part of it. Having is children, is it's having part children of it. how? Is yes, having children the only way to be fruitful? It's not the only way, but it's not the first part of it. You can't be fruitful. How do you know that well, it's the first part of it? What if okay, a couple okay. decides that being fruitful but, 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 is not just, having just, children? Let, 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 let me give you my opinion here. Let me give you my opinion. I'm a bit busy here. Let me give you my opinion so that you can continue with your program. This is the problem. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. The couples involved to handle the matter well. When you are being pressurized, think and know what you want. Emmanuel, if, if God, if Emmanuel, need, Emmanuel, well, if God yeah. meant for every couple to have children, why did God make some people infertile? Who are those ones? For me, I've only read in the scripture, a wife of a king. There are people, so, there are people who are infertile. Are you God saying it's not God? Infertile. Are you saying if it's not God that made them infertile? Yeah, uh, let me correct here. If anyone has been infertile on this head today, uh -huh. I don't know. But right in the scripture I'm going to pick is only a woman that I know. Okay, so God so so, so that woman it was God that made her infertile, Abi. No, but that particular okay. woman in the scripture was infertile, Abi. Because of what she did. Ah, I see. So people who are infertile is something that they did that caused it. 
Maybe. 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 So, you, so, 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 we see, so we see how we're building that pressure up. So you see how you're making the point that we spent no, weeks you, trying you to make. You don't, give, you don't give me a chance for my opinion. Emmanuel, you I'm questioning your but, opinions. Yes, because you've not heard me out. I have you heard you. Out. I have heard the, you. The, 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 truth, the truth is, the truth is when, when, when couples have been pressurized, mm. I think... I like I know it happens to me. I wanted to give myself as an example. Mm -hmm. My early marriage, mm -hmm. my daddy still the same thing. I heard from my cousins, my people around me, please were expecting. That does not send me crazy. We kept that was about two years later. So we got it. And today we are newer. I didn't go to a native man or anything. So they say that it's not an offense to me. They have not done anything wrong. All right, have, I think they just want to see something good from me. Thank you for calling me. Joseph Inibedri is the last call I'll take. And uh, he says it doesn't matter whether one gets married early or not. What, what has that got to do with anything, Joseph? Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Mm. Um, actually, this thing has to do with culture. Mm -hmm. Because this affects the way we reason, the way our approach to things mm -hmm. and life. Mm -hmm. I remember one month into my marriage, my, I was like, I don't want a child yet. But my wife just get this told me that is this what I mean you have to do just to cook just to do this I said no I'm not ready yet so I mean it, it, it's as a result of what she grew up with the environment she grew up with so how do we change that so the narrative should be corrected from parents we mm. should change it okay. I came from a family of with with a children of eight okay and you know in Nigeria we we have this mentality that the firstborn has the responsibility over the younger ones. Mm -hmm. You're putting more pressure on these children That's part right. time. That's right. So we should learn to change this. Parents should change the narrative on their children. Okay. Otherwise, it can affect us. It's already affecting us negatively. Mm. Joseph. The narrative should be changed and corrected from the parents. And no other thing. I agree with you. Thank you for calling me, Joseph. Thank you very much. Okay, that's where we wrap the show today. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. And this is where we wrap this series. It's been quite the long one. Huh? This is what, part five in the installment? It's it's been it's been it's been the thing. It it really has. And I've had a great time having this conversation. And I can only hope that I have changed something. You know, I can only hope that I've spoken to one person. I can only hope that I've changed the way that one person views it. It's also a bit heartbreaking that we've had this conversation for nearly five weeks. And on the last day, I have a conversation with Emmanuel. Almost seeming like he's undoing all the good work I've done. <laughs> but we prevail. We shall prevail. Again, I'm going to remind you that it is not your business. As a family member, you're not going to help and pay for school fees. You're not going to help and feed that baby. You're not going to help and do all those things that parents have to do with their children. So it is not your business when they are going to have kids. If a couple has decided, we don't want kids... It's not your business. It's not your place to try and convince them otherwise. Yes, we know you love them and you care for them and you want the best thing for them. But they also know what's good for them. Now, them wear the shoe now. Now, them know as if they tight them now. So, free them. Female. Eh? Not having children should not be a measure of success. Having or not having children, it shouldn't be a measure of success. And if God meant for everyone to have children, some people will not be infertile. Some men will not be shooting blanks. Some women will not have uh, 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 the inability to produce viable eggs. So if biologically there are people whom God has said you can't have biological children, then as people that God has given agency, it makes sense that some people can also choose to not have children, whether biological or adopted. And please, a child is a child is a child, whether biological or adopted. Coming up, Africa Industrialization Day on The Big Hard Fact. That's in the next hour. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Hard, hard Facts will be right back.